Hello and welcome back to chapter 9. This will be part 6 and this will be the final part uh, that we're going to cover thermochemistry for the general chemistry 1. Um, if you're in my class for chem 2, we'll see the second half of this chapter when we uh, do our thermochemistry slash thermodynamics in chem 2. So in this chapter, we're going to finally get off of that learning objective we've been on for a while. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate heat release from a bomb calorimeter. So we left off last time talking about pressure volume work. And I said that the work done, um, if you have um, external pressure being kept kept constant is the negative pressure times the delta V and we see that in pistons and so the exchange of heat energy in a system like that is similar to the exchange of work okay so the work in the system is going to be the negative of the negative pressure negative of the pressure times uh, delta V because you're decreasing pressure and increasing volume and so you can you can be um, exchanging heat and you can be exchanging work between the system and the volume and so this PV thing as I said we're going to see a little bit more about that in uh, chapter 10 which talks about gases and so gases pressure volume and all that stuff um, go hand in hand because the change in, ten in energy is Q plus W we can look at that change in energy by measuring the heat and the work. So it's not the easiest thing to do when you're just looking at how much energy is there. Okay, and so what a lot of times we do is we look at the change in the heat as we saw earlier. So as we're doing this, we can, we can say that as long as there's no change in volume, right, referencing back to that PV thing okay then the temperature change of the individual um, can can um, well sorry individual chemicals in the reaction we can't see them directly but we can see what happens to the temperature does it increase the temperature and give off heat or does it go down and absorb heat and so one of the ways that we do that is by using an insulated container uh, called a bomb calorimeter all right and so because of that because we're using now something around the system the Q of the surroundings is now equal to the Q of the calorimeter which is equal to the negative Q of the system okay so the calorimeter and is now becomes the surroundings because I have it closed off so if you if you use a bomb calorimeter you're using something that's at a constant volume we've got it sealed up and so it cannot change volume and that's important because we're going to only be looking at the change in temperature okay the change in temperature so the heat capacity of the calorimeter just like all other objects is the amount of heat absorbed for each degree that the temperature increases in degree C so we have a special C for a calorimeter which is C Cal and a C Cal is in kilojoules per degree C so it's important to remember those units are a little bit different and so when we take our inventory we need to make sure that our units are the same before we start plugging stuff in so a bomb calorimeter basically looks like this you have something that you can close and inside you have a bomb okay <laughs> and literally we're blowing something up in there or burning it or whatever you want to want to say but there you're going to have oxygen inside this cylinder you're going to have a sample on a little tray hanging in there in the oxygen wonder why we have oxygen hmm yeah we need oxygen to what ignite it then we're going to have this sealed bomb where you can screw it down and make sure that it's tight so we can't change pressure or volume and we're going to fill this outer side with water and we have a thermometer sticking in the water so that I can measure the change in temperature and then we got this little ignition wire which is um, attached back here and it is going to 
ignite that which is going to cause our sample to burn or explode or whatever you want to call it. That's why they call it a bomb calorimeter. And it's important that we keep the water stirred. So we use a stirrer to make sure that that water is staying stirred all the time because we want that transfer of energy to be um, a constant thing, okay? So that just keeps it a little bit more accurate. So how does this work? Okay, so the C-Cal, I said, I said earlier that we've got this C-Cal thing and we've got a Q-Cal, so those are of the calorimeter. So your, your delta E of the reaction is going to be equal to the heat of the reaction per mole. So that's where we're going to get to at the end. So when I do a bomb calorimeter problem, and you're going to know because it's going to say bomb calorimeter. All right, that's how you're going to know. Um, you're going to know that it's going to be three steps. Three steps, always. Okay, so the first step if you have a bomb calorimeter and it tells you um, some information. So first of all, it's gonna, we're going to need a delta T, right? Because the Q of the calorimeter, just like the Q um, of the other materials we saw, is going to have C cal times delta T. Notice we don't have a mass on this because that's taken into consideration because of the calorimeter. Okay, each calorimeter has its own um, sp uh, specific heat. Okay, so when we do that C-Cal, um, you usually do that experimentally so you know exactly what it is. Okay, so you've already considered mass and all that in that previous. So you've got a C-Cal times delta T. So let's see what we got. We've got the temperature is going to rise from... 24.92 degrees C to 28.33 degrees C. All right, so that is going to give us our delta T when we put that in there. And the delta T, that makes that um, 3.410 degrees C. So that's our delta T. The C of the calorimeter they are gonna they're gonna tell us is 4.90 kilojoules per degree C and and it says that you figured that out in another experiment because that's typically what you do you do that first and then you use that calorimeter that's been calibrated um, with that particular C cal so I know those two numbers and so those are the only two numbers that I need to know um, to do this first one. There is another number up here. I'll go ahead and write it down. And it says that I have a mass of 1.01 grams of sucrose, which is C12H22O11. All right. So since they gave it to me, I'm writing it down because that may be important. But I don't need it right now because all I need is the CCAL and the delta T. So I am going to plug those in. And so I want to look at something, though. Okay, so I got kilojoules and I got degree C. So I'm good. So I've got 4.90 kilojoules per degree C. That's why this is so important that you write your units down when you work these problems, times 3.410 degrees C. So the Q cal is going to be equal to... Uh, 16.71 kilojoules. Now, this increased in temperature, so this is a positive um, temperature, right? A positive change because it went from 24.92 to 28.33. All good? Okay. All right. So that's a positive 16.71. This was step one. Step two is so easy because we know the Q of the calorimeter is equal to the negative Q of the reaction, right? And, and or you could say the Q of the reaction is equal to the negative of the Q of the cal. So either way you want to look at it, 
what, it, what this gives me now is that the Q of the reaction is a negative 16.71 kilojoules because it's going to be the opposite in sign but equal in magnitude of whatever my calorimeter gave me. So my third step is I need to say what the delta E is. Okay, and the delta E is going to be Q of reaction per mole. Q of reaction per mole. So I know I just found out what the Q of the reaction is. It's a negative 16.71 kilojoules. Uh-oh, I don't know how many moles I have. I'm stuck. Hey, I know what the mass is, don't I? I know I got 1.01 grams of my sucrose, and it's not too hard for me to look up what the molar mass is. So one mole of sucrose is 342 grams, okay? So I can figure that out. And so that means that I have a small number, 0.00295, moles of sucrose. So uh, now I'm going to put that number over here, 0 0.00295 moles. And so that minus 16.17 divided by 0 0.00295 is going to give me a negative 5.66 times 10 to the third kilojoules per mole. And that is how you calculate the heat that is produced or the energy that is produced in a bomb calorimeter. And this is how they can actually come up with how many calories something is, is they burn it and they see how much, um, how much energy it gives off. Okay? All right. So that's how you do it. And that's example 9.5. Um, here are your practice problems. And you're also doing, um, remember, you're going to be rearranging some things. In this one, you're going to find the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter, right? So that's the C-cal. Um, and in this one, you're going to, um, da, da, da. so you're going to see how much energy you produce in that in for practice one, okay? All right, so those are your practice problems for this. So go ahead and do those and make sure that, that you can put them in, rearrange your equation if you need to, um, go backwards if you need to, if you're having to go back and figure something out. All right, and so that is the end of bomb calorimeters, and that is the end of Chapter 9, which was all about our thermochemistry for Chem 1.